So Justin, this is Anne and uh, Nicole. Hey Justin, how are you? Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for meeting Nicole, nice to meet you. They're actually live right now, so. Right now, hello internet. Give them a second to set up and I'm gonna leave you with um, where would you like us to stand? Right about here is good. This is about the most room okay. I have. I'm going to go over one game that's very limited. Do the people behind us mind being on a live stream? I think it's very important to ask I them. I don't know. I haven't checked. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so I um, don't know how much Josh has told you about what we do. I'm guessing. I mean, very brief. Very brief. Okay. <laughs> So we are Twitch streamers. We're okay. not Twitch employees. We are streamers on Twitch. Uh, we play board games uh, through our live stream with our audience. Nice. So Nicole, her nickname is TP for Twitch Proxy. <laughs> nice. Also That's for other things. <laughs> uh, and our audience comes on and through chat, they control a player in any of the games that we're playing. That's, you mentioned it's like Twitch plays Pokemon, but it's for board games. <laughs> it seems to be. That's, that's fantastic. Yes. Um, so we're kind of taking the same idea over to BGGCon and a lot of cons that we do, cool. whereas, you know, we're still your proxy, but we're your proxy for here at the cons. Nice. So we are introducing, you know, for those people who can't be here, right. we get to show them what's going on at the cons. We get to introduce them to publishers, developers, show them what's new and what's going on, and get to talk to industry industry insiders. Nice, nice. And then they tell you, go over here and talk to this person kind of thing? Some, yeah. Nice, yeah. very good. Yeah, very make good. sure, because we've got a lot of people who definitely are excited about BGG Con and right. uh, people who know who's going to be there. Sure. So if they're we like, hey, make it themselves, yeah, right? may, yeah. I really want to see this person, nice. I'm over there. Very cool, very cool. I have no shame. I'll talk to anyone. Yay, very good. <laughs> well, it's, it's a fun show. You should. Everybody here is pretty darn cool. That's so, what yeah. I was just talking to everybody about, that my favorite part about this con really has to be the sense of community, yeah. openness, friendliness. You know, you you walk into the big main gaming room and right. it's giant and there's right. so many it's people. It's so intimidating. It is, mm -hmm. but uh, you walk in, I don't make it in three steps until <laughs> somebody's like, hey, I need a player. Yeah, you want to play or, this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's I, very, very fun. I love that. Uh, hey, you, come here. Do you want to play this game right now? Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. Uh, so, Justin. Yes. Speaking of industry insiders, uh -oh. tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Justin DeWitt. I am the chief creative officer of Fireside Games, which is a company I started with my lovely wife, Anne-Marie. Oh, I'm going to say that number really quick. Very good, very good. She's the CEO. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We started the company back in, well, technically 2008, then we launched Castle Panic in 2009. That was my first design, our first game, and it launched the company. We've been going gangbusters ever since then. Um, I can't even keep track of how many games are in our catalog anymore. I think we're at 12 or something like that, but we're constantly adding new games. Uh, we've added expansions to Castle Panic, whole brand new things we're doing, and um, it's been a rocket ride ever since. We haven't done Kickstarters. We've actually funded everything ourselves, just gone right into the market, and uh, we, uh, Castle Panic was uh, episode six of Tabletop, which was amazing for us. That oh, congratulations! Yeah. So it was really, really cool. Will Wheaton's a big fan of ours, so uh, it's it's been a great ride. And BGG is one of our favorite conventions. We're based in Austin, which is like three hours south. Oh, that of makes here, it so pretty convenient. Super easy. Yeah, yeah. What got you guys into uh, board games, the board game industry? Well, I know I'm kind of panning this way. <laughs> She's good to talk to you too. Well, it really started. Pretty much how a lot of people nowadays got started, that's with Settlers of Catan. Mm -hmm. And we played that in, I think it's the year 2000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Justin had grown up playing board games and designing board games. Well, we both grew up playing them, but right. he grew up designing them. He was an only child. And, yeah. And, uh, Poor lonely so, kid making games on yeah. his own. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so after we played Settlers, Justin was just like, oh, wow, you know, board gaming has really changed. And that inspired him to start designing board games again. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he had a bunch of different uh, stages of development, and he had Castle Panic in a pizza box. And on the very the top lid, that's where the game board was. It was in this, you know, this parchment paper with yeah. like colored pencil. It's pretty rough. Kind of it's pretty rough. Lid. Yeah, all the pieces were inside the pizza, pizza box, and we would take it around to our friends' houses on the weekends, and they, you know, we play games, and then they'd inevitably request, hey, can we play that? To the that pizza box game? game? Yeah, the pizza right. box game. Yeah. yeah, let's play that one. And uh, so, you know, we just kept refining it over time, and, and uh, you know, finally we were like, this is like a really fun game that we play just like we play other games. And, um, so we decided to um, uh, save our money and uh, publish it on our own and see uh, what we could make of it, especially mm -hmm. because we had so many other games that fit. Oh, bless you! Bless you! Bless you. Bless you.
trying to hold it in. <laughs> but, um, You're not supposed to do that. Your head explodes. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, so we decided that well, all the games he had hanging together, we really had a catalog and um, a brand. So we started with Castle Panic, and uh, we thought we had um, probably three or four years of inventory, and we sold out in ten weeks. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That must have felt yeah. so good. Yeah, it was a little great. terrifying yeah. and great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we were kind of caught off guard. So we it was had one of those problems you want to have. Yes, exactly. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So it took, you know, three months to get the product back in the right. warehouse. And, and, then and then that sold out. That sold out. And then we did it again, and then that yeah. sold out. So. And then we got on tabletop, and then yeah. it was like, how much do we keep printing? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And uh, with all the expansions and the variations we have in the line now, it's just, you know, really flourished. That's that's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. guys. Thank you. Thank you. It's very cool to be able to hear about somebody who's, you know, grown up playing board games mm -hmm. or designing board games and being able to turn that as an adult into a, a career, exactly. a job, something that you yeah. really love. It's a like, job. <laughs> I like to do this, and somebody gets to pay me for it? Exactly. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yes, everyone here pays us to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, people. <laughs> yeah. So today we are showing off which uh, games? Two things I thought. Our most recent release, Dastardly Dredgeables. Okay. Um, which has a demo sticker on it because I'm sold out. I don't have any more left. I had to grab a demo copy. There's oh, wow. more coming like literally in a few weeks. It's on a boat right now, but we're sold out. It is a steampunk airship card building game. Okay. Um, very fun, very quick, and uh, uh, pretty innovative. It has a bunch of mechanics we've never seen before. Um, so we'll show you that, and then we'll give you a quick overview of Engines of War, which is the newest expansion to Castle Panic. So new, it's actually not out till next week. So, awesome. Um, Sure. I'm going to back out at this point. Okay. Do you want to take a picture? Oh, yeah, totally. You're on that. Thank you. Yes, the ships themselves are awesome. <laughs> can you tell us quickly about, um, before we get into like game mechanics, sure. can you talk to us, is this a game that you've designed? I'm talking uh, yes, this is me, actually. This is one of my most recent designs. Um, uh, I was inspired by the idea of something that would work uh, based on really familiar mechanics that everyone grew up with, like set collecting. Everybody knows set collecting and how to play with that, but I wanted to give it a twist. How can I make it fun for gamers who want a little more to chew on? And so that's what this game has at its heart, is simple things you're familiar with, but you've never seen them done this way before. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's easy to pick up and learn, but there's a lot going on under the surface. Talk to me about artwork. Okay. I um, hired... Uh, um, what's Jeff's last name, Anne-Marie? Can you remember off the top of your head? Oh, wait. Hang on. I've got him in here. Sorry. Jeff Porter. I apologize, Jeff. I'm on TV. Jeff, Jeff Porter did the artwork for this. He's fantastic. We love him. Um, he sent me... I sent him some sketches, and the game is tricky because the way it works, the airships are sliced up like if they've been through a, 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 a slot machine. So I needed him to be very precise with the art, and he was awesome. He nailed it right away. Um, I sent him, sent him some really rough sketches like, hey, can I have a guy in a top hat doing this? And he drew this. I'm like, yes, awesome. Thank you. Perfect. So, exactly what you yeah. wanted. Totally. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if you mind me. I will, I will, yes, I will stand next to my own stuff. Okay, let me do that. There you go, another cards. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You bet. Awesome. So tell, um... So it's a lot of stuff that we're very familiar with, done a little differently. Right, right. What are we doing? All right, so what you're doing is you're trying to build steampunk airship. The idea is, with the backstory is a sort of Willy Wonka-esque tale of Professor Hornswoggle's retiring, he made the best airships, he wants you to take over, you have Hornswoggle. to come Hornswoggle. Professor Phineas Edmund Hornswoggle. That is quite yes, a name. Yes, very so he impressive. has retired, and you're, you want to take over by building the best airships. And the way it works is everybody gets a guide sheet like this, and it shows you your blueprint of your airship with its seven different areas, the nose cone, the lift engine, the tail. Um, like that. So everyone's going to lay that in front of them. And then the deck is made of pieces of those, those pieces of airships in different styles. So like, this is a drive engine from the suit that is used as the wrench. It's very militaristic and okay. iron looking. And then we've got our very gaudy ornamental screw suit, which there's the lift engine for that. You've got your uh, key suit, which is a little more mainstream. More Let me see. Let's, um, maybe Nicole, you can get a close up of some of this artwork here for the cards. There's a few other ones. So there are nine different suits like that, and each suit not only has the icon, it actually has a different look to it, like a different aesthetic, yeah. and you want to build your airship as clean as you can, meaning you want to have the most of one suit in your ship, probably because it looks good, and also that's where the points are. So as as you're laying your parts down, you put them where they go. For example, if I had a tail, I'd put it there. Right. If I had a lift engine, there were two, one in the front, one in the back, I'd put it there. Uh, my drive engine can go here. But now, as you can see, I'm making a bit of a mess. This ship's from all different suits. It works. It all goes together. Oh, there's my drive engine for that. Awesome. Here's a gondola rear. So it's not the prettiest thing I've ever made, but it's getting there. Now, the deal is, 
um, someone's eventually going to play all seven pieces, and when they do the round ends, and then you score it up. You only score the suit you use the most, though. So in this okay. bad example, I only use the, the goggle suit the most. It's two for each one. So even though this is not airworthy, I get four points for that airship if this is how the round ended. Okay. Um, so, and I'd actually get a fifth a wild. for the wild. The wild's worth one point. Everything on your the most used suit is worth two. If I'd been able to get more of these out, I'd have been better. Um, it's possible to build a perfectly clean airship. No one's really ever done that. Um, and there is something called a muddle. A muddle is a mix where it's one of everything with no wilds and no pairs. So it's complete like garbage. That's worth 20 points. <laughs> so if you can get the muddle, great. Most people die trying. Um, now here's what makes the game interesting. So set collection. We've all done that before. The way this game works is, as I said, everyone has one of these in front of them. Your airship is public knowledge, but your cards are private. You keep those hidden. Okay. When you play a card to your airship, like say for example, I was going to play this tail. I announce I'm playing a tail. I put it down on my airship and I can either replace an existing part or put a brand new one down. Everyone at the table, if they have a tail in their hand, has to play it to their airship. So let's say you had one and you hadn't played a tail yet. Great, on your turn you get a free card on my turn. But if you have already played one, you really wanted that one, you have to replace it with the one from your hand. So when I play a card, right. everyone has to play that card. And that can be either helpful or harmful, depends on how your how your airship is set up. And this is on everyone's turn. And then, in case that wasn't enough to kind of mess with people, <laughs> you also have special cards you can throw at them. Like, I might keep the Gilded Dynamotor. That's one point at the end of the round oh, if look I have at it these. in my hand. And I've got... Where's my saboteur? She's my baby. Come on. Oh, the Ether Extractor. That's kind of a fun one. You literally pull cards out of the deck and hope you can keep them. Um... <laughs> Yeah, if you want to take shots of those, there. Yeah. Let me find you. Find your baby. Uh, yeah. We're Nicole. Yeah. So there's 12 of these specials that just kind of let you mess with. Pete. Here we go. The saboteur. There you go. Get you that one too when you're ready. So that's one of the most aggressive ones. You can actually pay. You get rid of a card from your hand, and it blows up a part from somebody else's airship. That's about that's the nice. most direct competitive. Like I said, there's only 12 of those in the game. Most of them are more like get a free card or steal a card from somebody. Usually, what's happening is you're going, "Oh, I see how your airship looks really beautiful. I'm about to mess it up by playing a card to my own airship. Take that." So, and then my personal favorite part is. Um, as the game goes on and people get more offended, you reach for the Handbook of Victorian Insults on the back of the rule book, which literally includes periodically appropriate insults to tell people. All My Eye and Betty Martin. Yes, that's when it's good. <laughs> You're not going to say that one a lot. <laughs> Bang up to the elephant, meaning it's perfect in every way. Whiffle gig. Yep. Barlet. Yep. Nap. This is, this is pretty Those awesome. Those are terrible, terrible things to call your friends while you're playing a game. So. Flim flam. Oh, this is very... Yes. So it's very steampunkery like. That's yeah, yeah. very, very but cool. It is essentially a set collection game with a couple of whammies thrown in of when I play, you have to play, and same thing on your turn, I have to play a card if it's in my hand. If it's not in my hand, I'm safe. And there's a few other little bits we give you. You can manipulate the deck a little bit by what we call the Emporium. It's a series of face-up cards next to the deck. So you could draw those instead of drawing from the deck blindly. So you can kind of fine-tune your hand a little bit more that way and stuff. So there's a few little fun things like that hiding in there. But that's it. That's it. It's a $20 game, and I'm sold out right now. But it will be back in just a few weeks, I promise. And rightfully so, because this definitely looks like a lot of fun. And yeah. I think it's at a really great price point. It's, the, the box is small and yep. makes it portable. Very portable. You can take it over at friend's house. Yep. And this looks Very like... easy to teach. This is not a complicated game. No. Not going to burn anybody's brain. So. No. Nope. So that's very, very cool. That's brand new. That came out in July. Sold out immediately. We reprinted. So. If they want to get one, obviously not here, and right. they're going to have to wait. Where is my audience going to pick up a oh, copy? Their local game store is definitely going to carry it. Um, if they can't find it there, they can get it on either normal uh, online outlets, Amazon, any place they shop traditionally. Do you have um, a list of your uh, game stores that carry the game? I do actually. If you go to our website, which is Fireside Games One Word dot com, uh, we have a store locator, and you can literally just click it and scroll. It's a Google map. You can type in your address. It'll show you every store and. The nice thing about that is it's a curated list. I know those stores carry my games. Now, they may not carry all my games. They might be out of stock, but they are ones who have contacted us because they carry our stuff. You Perfect. know you can get it. Awesome. So now we're back to Castle... Well, not back. Now we're over to Castle Panic. We are. We are. And you have a new expansion called Engines of War. We do. Awesome. That's exactly it. So let me get a few bits out here. Bits and pieces. Lots of bits, lots of pieces. Nicole, can you see the board from there? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so Castle Panic's been around for a while now. This is actually the third expansion. Engines of War, here's the box for that. So, I don't know if she needs that or not, but that's... Nicole, you want to get a close-up of that box? So that's the newest panic. Like I said, that comes out next week. Uh, we are showing it off here at the store. 
No. It is not being released on Facebook. No. no, no, this is live in your local game store and everything like that. Yeah. Um, so, in normal Castle Panic, one of the biggest changes we made is when you build walls to defend your castle, it takes a, a brick card and a mortar card, which come out of the normal deck. We've changed that. Now you have a resource deck, which contains things like wood, rope, mortar, and bricks. So now there's four resources you're working with in a separate deck. Okay. You can draw up from those on your turn or the castle deck, any combination you want. But the trick is, you're going to spend these differently. Let me ask you a question right there. Sure. You've changed your mechanic. Mm -hmm. Was that as of a, did, is, was that a feedback thing? Was that a, you just wanted to see the game played a little differently? Yes. Uh, not so much a feedback, although people had asked for the ability to build a few things, but it's been something I've been churning, honestly, since the first game came out with. I've been wanting to get this mechanic in the game. I tried a bunch of different variations. Like, one of them was in the game, uh, if you play competitively, you kill a monster, you keep it like a trophy, and they're worth points. I thought about using those as a currency, but it didn't work very well. It was a very clunky cart before the horse kind of system. Okay. So with this, I was like, you know what? We're going to pull the resources out and try it this way, and it was immediately beautiful. It just worked. It was like, this is what the game needed to be. So um, it's mostly me fiddling around with things till something works right. <laughs> That's the real thing. It works. Yep. So you've got these resource cards, and one of the big differences now is how you build. We have this engineer, and it's easier to show this way. He has a list of tasks you can give him. You can have him build uh, spring traps, walls, just like in the old game, brick okay. and mortar. Um, new things you build, big expensive things he can build. And so you assign him a task, and then everyone on their turn can pay uh, ingredients essentially to complete that task. So in the old game, you had to have a brick and a mortar to build a wall. It just, you had to have both in your hand. Now, if I put down the brick, but you put down the mortar, we built a wall together on two different turns, which means I didn't have to trade for it, and I can play other cards. So, there's a whole cooperative building element now. Um, and again, there's new things you build. So, a spring trap would let you build this little trap bit that you get to put anywhere on the board. This is new. You've never been able to do this in Castle Panic before. You put that on the board. When a monster hits that trap, it gets thrown all the way back to the forest. So, you're buying some time, keeping these guys from getting into the castle too. Okay. You're also going to be able to build a barricade, which is basically a wall that you can put anywhere out here. It doesn't have to be in front of the castle anymore. You can put it right in front of the woods if you want it. Kind of thing. Okay. You also can build a pit, which is basically a bunch of spikes in the ground that when a monster hits, going to do a point of damage to him. And again, you can put that anywhere on the board. Now, forgive my, forgive my ignorance. I've never played Castle Panic before. What? Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing in Castle Panic? Sorry, let me back up. For anybody who doesn't know, yes, it's a cooperative tower defense board game. That's the best description we have, really. Um, you, as the players, are all defending this castle. You don't have a piece in the game. You are just the castle. Okay. You can make it through the pile of monsters that is going to come out, and you have at least one tower left standing. You win the game. If the monsters take down all your towers, game's over, monsters win. So you're all cooperating, playing cards to hit these monsters and damage them before they get close because every player's turn is a series of get cards, fight monsters, then move everything on the board closer and draw new monsters. It's a conveyor belt system of monsters coming out just constantly destroying you. You lose walls, you lose towers, you can rebuild walls but not towers and stuff. So um, that's the general thing of what's going on. This okay. just gives you new things to do now. Done. Awesome. Um, so we've talked about some of the things the engineer can build. The really yes. expensive stuff is where it gets interesting. The catapult and ballista. These are the two new ones that go on the keep. So the normal game does not include this tower. That's what the normal base castle panic looks like. Okay. This tower is not one of the ones you need to keep alive. It's the place you build your heavy weapons. You now have a catapult and a ballista that you can shoot. And that's done by spending cards from your hand to hit these monsters. Pretty no, the pieces are very, they're they are great. <laughs> they're very cuddly. They're very cuddly. <laughs> they're, uh, they're balanced on there, just yeah, so. Yeah, they, they're a little loose. We want to make sure they wouldn't damage it when players had to take them on off. Because you build them and they make it destroyed and you have to rebuild things and stuff. So. I don't know. I'm just very clumsy. So. <laughs> well, it's also very floppy right there. So. so one of the nice things is, as a group, you've all spent ingredients. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I'm see? officially the best monster. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's how they win. <laughs> So you've all worked together to build these these new cool weapons, and then you want to use them, and you use it by spending cards a little differently than you do in the base game um, to hit monsters, but you do more damage. The ballista's kind of fun. It does two points to the first monster it hits, and then it does one point to the monsters behind it, like skewers the monsters all the way out. Very cool. Um, the catapult, instead of doing most cards in the game, do one point of damage. Catapult does three right where it so hits. So it's a heavy hitter. Exactly, and you can split it up. If I have two monsters in one space, I can spend the damage. One and two? Them. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. If I have three monsters, I can decide how 
however I want to split it. So it's very nice for like different ways to defend the castle in clumps or in long lines kind of thing. Um, of course, one of the trademarks of Castlevania is that when you get an expansion, you don't just get um, good stuff, you get bad stuff. So I give you more monsters now. So things I've given you are like the Shaman. The Shaman, for example, is a new monster that every time she moves, she heals every monster, including herself, in the same color. Is it not my favorite kind of monster? And, and gets more health back, yeah. Then there's the Breathtaker, who if he shows up, you can't trade with other players, which is a huge part of this game. It's so co-op like that. You can't trade till he's dead, so sorry. It gets worse, too. Um, the reason, part of the reason it's called Engines of War is because I've introduced the idea of siege engines in the game. Okay. You take six orcs at the beginning of the game and you set them aside because they're the crew that are going to man these things. When you draw okay. the siege tower, it doesn't go on the board. Two orcs go under it and this goes on the board. A little sandwich of evil. You have to kill this thing on top, then you can get to the juicy orcs underneath. The guys and work in the siege exactly. tower. Exactly. And it's going to come closer and closer and closer and try and kill you. Uh, there's three versions whoops, of the siege engines. There's the war wagon, which moves forward and then goes left or right by die roll, so you don't know where it's going to be, which means a blue card may not work on it, and maybe a red one will or whatever. Okay. You're going to get the battering ram, which never takes damage when it hits walls. Normally in Castle Panic, anything hitting the castle gets hurt while it does it. Not this guy. He just smashes everything down. Uh, Siege Tower will get in and block your walls so you can't rebuild walls, and then monsters just walk right over him like a ramp right into your castle. Oh, so, that's nice. Yeah, that's terrible. A <laughs> um, couple more things. The monsters got smart and built buildings now. You have what are called uh, encampments. So this is a barracks. Okay. When you roll at the end of your turn to put new monsters on the board, the number you get is the arc they show up in. So if I roll the one, that would go there. Now, it's not really a monster. It doesn't move. Right. Instead, new monsters now, when you draw, the first one always appears right next to the barracks. So you're going to end up with a conga line of monsters monsters getting closer and closer and closer and just ramming into you. Also, um, where did he go? There he is. The forward camp. Forward camp does just what it says. It's a forward camp. When you put that one out, it splits whatever color it lands in, and then all the monsters you draw now in this area yeah. start in the archer ring instead of the forest. You have less time to deal with. Well, though. Yeah. Goblin saboteurs, when they show up, not terribly scary, but when they hit the castle, equal, the whatever number their health is, that's yeah. how many resource cards are banished from the game, as in Gone Forever. So, oh! So, you're welcome, like I said. Luckily, you get those pits and traps and cool ballistas and catapults, so hurry up and build them, because the monsters are coming. Are coming. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> cool. That's what we've done. So, Castle Panic is such a gateway game, we want it to be super accessible. It's, I like, it's called our Thanksgiving game. You can play it at Thanksgiving, no one's going to complain. Nobody's going to be a sore loser, because it's co-op. Right. Now you start putting in the expansion, it becomes a gamer's game. Lots to chew on, lots of decisions, different it strategies. It seems like it's a whole other layer to your game. Yeah. It's definitely, it sounds like something that we're... I've, to be honest with you, if I was going to pick it up for the first time, right. it might be a little intimidating for me. I would pick up Castle. Yeah. I would pick, pick up, up Castle Panic, right, right, right. and then I'd try it for a couple exactly. times. And then when you start getting, oh, I got it, this is easy. I want to add a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can mix and match these. That's one of the things I'm really proud of, is that any of these expansions work individually, or together, or one and two, and two and three. Oh, and that's cool. However you want to do so it. So with how many expansions you want to use, it could be a completely di more or less a completely different game. Seriously, everything is a pretty big dramatic. They're all like this, too, where they have like a whole package they come with. Like the Wizard's Tower is all about magic. Magic, fire, flying monsters, uh, bigger, scarier monsters that have permanent effects. Dark Titan is about one really big guy called Akronok. He's an eight-point monster. Normally, the biggest things in the game are around three. And he comes with minions, and they has guys that show up and warn you he's coming. You get a little guy called the Cavalier. You drive around on horseback and send into the monster. So each one is a different like set of skills and things you get to do. And you mix and match however you want. <laughs> we're pretty excited. We're really excited about Engines of War. Do you have um, something like email notification? This is coming out two weeks? Uh, the 23rd is its street date, so literally next week it'll be out. Do you have something like an email notification for when it's definitely for the drop date? Do you have like a sign up for more information? Yeah, if people want to sign up, we have a newsletter. Uh, we do once a month. It's very, very brief, very like, here's what's new, here's what we're working on, here's what's coming. Just go to firesidegames.com and go to our contact page. You can sign up for that there. Um, we also, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, all that stuff, and we always blog and stuff. I like to sometimes show pictures of new prototypes I'm working on and stuff. So fun things like that. So, yeah, you can definitely keep up with us on all the usual social meets and all that. <laughs> that no one calls it. <laughs> so now you've now coined that term. Awesome. <laughs> cool. This has been really, really awesome. Good. I'm glad you had fun. Yeah. You want to hear about um, your kitty Oh. Your kitty kitty? Your kitty kitty. Okay. Um, all right. Can I have the box for your kitty kitty, Emery? Oh, never mind. We're going to steal that.
So, this is our crazy cat collecting game. Here, kitty kitty. Uh, back in stock. This is another one that sold out. We had to get back in, but it's in now. Uh, this is available at your stores everywhere. And the idea is, um, it's your crazy cat person simulator, essentially. So you're Nicole. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> it's, you're a crazy cat person simulator. So I said, so you're Nicole. Hi. 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 If, if, the, if the answer to the question, do I need all the cats, is yes, this is for you. <laughs> so the way it works is there are 40 cat minis, which are adorable, four different colors and three different poses, sitting and standing and that kind of thing. Um, they go in the neighborhood. Everyone who's playing gets a property board, and then you're going to basically try and get the cats out of the neighborhood onto your property. It's really, really simple. You have two actions on your turn. Move a cat or play a card. And you can repeat. You can play two cards, move two cats, whatever you want to do. And each spot on your property, the yard, the porch, the house, is a spot. So you move the cats as you want to. Some cards are going to be like, move two cats, or steal a cat from your neighbor, or everyone but you has to put a cat back in the neighborhood. So there's a lot of like finagling with the cats you're going to do. Okay. Um, when the last card's drawn, everybody gets one more round and then you score it up. You're always going to get three points for cats on the porch and five in the house, but then there's all these other special scoring abilities which actually give it a surprising amount of strategy. For example, did you get one of each color somewhere on your property? Bonus points. Did you get the most of, say, orange? Bonus points. Did you only put one color of cat in the house itself? More bonus points. So there's all sorts of things you can do in terms of what you take, and when you steal a cat from someone or make them take a cat, you can really mess with them that way. But it's very quick. It's like a 20-minute game. It is very, very cute and adorable, and it's all about just get as many cats as you can. That is the goal. Game designer? This is by Chris McArdle. She used to be our customer service rep. If you ever emailed us and had a damage or anything, you have probably worked with Chris. She's in Hawaii now, so. <laughs> yep. Getting her royalties and living the life on the beach. Pretty good. Art. This is definitely, the, the art style is very different. Yes. Who was our artist? Our artist for this was Tony uh, Tony Steele. He is a uh, artist. I want to say he's in Ohio. I don't actually remember exactly where he's from now. But we contracted with him. He's a friend of ours that we met through conventions. Chris knew him as well. They were friends. We're like, hey, why don't we get you to draw this? He has a very, very fun, quirky, cartoony style it's, we wanted. For it's this. absolutely yeah. adorable. Yeah. Was that also your sculptor? Did you have a different sculptor? No, actually, uh, uh, Scott Frank did our uh, uh, our sculpting on that in terms of the 3D mini things. And then we sent him off to the factory and had that made. So it's quite a team effort. Again, all friends of ours, people we know from conventions and all that stuff so yeah good stuff we're excited this one's nice to have back in stock too it's very good so there you go that's most of our stuff Nicole did we have any other questions from chat um, I'm being told that Bears were also an amazing game <laughs> Bears is Anne Marie's game actually she designed that one it's right there. Do so you want to go over that one quickly? That, that's probably worth moving. No, no, okay. <laughs> so bears, the fun thing about bears no, is... <laughs> Bears is a real-time dice pairing game, which is kind of a weird pile of words to put together. But what it means is you're going to take all these white dice and put them out in the middle. And this is our campsite, because bears have invaded our campsite, and you have to survive somehow. And all gamers know surviving wildlife attacks about rolling dice. It's the only way to survive. So that's what we're going to do. Obviously. Obviously. Everybody's going to get five of these black player dice, which have three faces that are guns, runners, and sleepers. The white dice are only going to be tents or bears. So this is like a community pool in the middle, and then everyone has their own black dice. And the way it works is you roll the dice in the middle, and then boom, everybody goes. You roll your black dice. There are no turns. It's just go, go, go. You roll your dice, oh, wow. black dice, as many times as you want, and then you make pairs. And the pairs you can make are you can pair a gun with a bear, shooting a bear, basically keeping the campsite safe. That's one point. Okay. You can run away from the campsite, keeping keeping yourself safe for two points, or take a risk and sleep through the whole thing and hope everyone else chases off the bears. Here's the deal. At the end of the round, it's going to look kind of like this. People Panda, that would be you, IRL. <laughs> There's different ways to get rid of the bears. and then, Or you can do a third way, which is sleep through the night in a tent and hope everybody else took care of the bears. Exactly. That's totally me. Yes. Yeah. And, it, and if it works, slacking pays off. Because the deal is, it's going to look kind of like this at the end. You're going to have clumps of scored dice that people got, and then there'll be some dice left over in the middle. Because the round ends when all the dice in the middle, these white ones, are either all tents or all bears. Now, that could happen right away. If there's one bear and a bunch of tents and somebody takes that bear, that's it. So, it's all about one face left. Wow. Once that happens, you're going to score it up. Like I said, you get one point for every time you shoot a bear, two for running. You'll get five every time you sleep and there's no bears left. If it's just tents, five points. Slacking pays off. Slacking pays off. But if there's <laughs> bears left, they eat you when you sleep and it's minus two for each of those. Oh. So, you get gobbled up like that. Um, so, definitely a risk. There is 
pressure is. What's fun is um, this isn't random. The dice in the middle are the dice we didn't take. So we are the ones manipulating the middle, which means if you're really clever and you see, oh, you're going for an awful lot of sleepers, I'm going to try and leave some bears. So you take everything that isn't bears. If you're fast enough with your dice, it's a very quick game. A round is literally 20 seconds. This oh, wow. is a very fast game. The so whole you really thing, need to think. You don't have much time to it's more you react go with your gut. Thing. Yeah, roll, 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 see what you got. Now, I will say this. Having played this game for years and years, you can get a sort of meta sense of like, ah, I know the best way to rig this one. It won't always work, but you'll get a sense for what you think you want to do. Yeah, the whole game seriously is like probably 15 to 20 minutes. And like I said, rounds at 20 seconds. There's very little downtime. Everyone is in and then score it up, put the white dice back in the middle, shake them up again and go. It is, a, it is basically a party game with a little bit of thinking to it. That's very, very cool. So that's bears, yeah. Anything, uh, do we have anybody else? I feel like I feel like you have a magic hat and games keep on coming out. I, I have a giant <laughs> pile of stuff I can keep talking about, yeah. And if you haven't guessed, I'm a little excited. I love all of our stuff. We don't publish it if we don't think it's cool. It's that simple. We we do this partly for money, but mostly for love. So it's like, yeah, let's make things that are awesome that we put out in the world that everybody else will want to share and play. That's you know? usually how it works. Being a gamer, being somebody who likes to design, yeah. having like design games, right. you would want to put out stuff that yeah, you I would want to play. Exactly. I want to play these things. Yeah. I will gladly sit down at any of our games. Slowest seller, best seller. I don't care. I'll play any of them because I love them all. So. But I'm very biased. <laughs> Justin, thank you so much thank for you, taking guys. some time. Is there any uh, last-minute things you want to let our viewers know? Um, come to BGG if you haven't. It's awesome. Um, watch these guys on Twitch. This sounds like a blast. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. And, um, yeah, if you're interested in anything I've told you about, firesidegames.com. we got videos on how to play, free downloadable stuff. We give away a lot of promos at shows, so come see us. So, yeah, awesome. Good stuff. Awesome. Thank you again, Justin. Thank you very much. Hello? Hi, Great Camp! Another <laughs> one of, uh, so we're really trying to build the board game right. community on Twitch. Yes, uh, right. Brittany, what is Brittany's last name? Brown. Why would I forget? Anyway. Uh, Brittany Brown is a community manager, okay. and what her job is, with, she she does work for t Twitch, right. and she is really trying to help us as streamers nice. uh, really uh, put out the word about board gaming on Twitch. Okay. So Crit Camp is another one of our fellow board gamers. They really, uh, nice. their cornerstone game, I think, I would call it, is uh, Zombie Side. Oh, nice. So yeah. they're on here checking checking you out. Very good, very good. Hi, guys. <laughs> Huh? We do. We have an absolutely fantastic community. I, I, I couldn't have put anything better. So. All right. Thank you so much again. Bye, Justin. Bye.